In this video, I'm going to go over the overview of Kali Linux because um, if you're not aware, with OSCP, the lab portion is called PWK, which is penetration testing with Kali Linux. So they're going to give you a Kali Linux box. Basically, what Kali Linux is, is it's a Linux distribution that comes prepackaged with all the pen testing tools that you need. So there's many distributions of Linux. Uh, you have like uh, Ubuntu. Um, you have you know, Arch Linux, uh, Mint, all different. There's there's tons, honestly. There's tons. Red Hat. There's just so many different distributions. And particularly for us as hackers, this one is really convenient because this one is centered around penetration testing. So it comes prepackaged with a bunch of tools, which saves you time in setting things up. Now, I know a lot of people in the security space that actually prefer to use different distributions. Some people I know like to use the Pentest framework with like a different distribution of Linux, maybe Ubuntu or something like that. But this is what we have right here. So I'm just going to step through basically, you know, what's on here, how to use it. So because this is Linux, uh, maybe if a lot of you guys are complete beginners, maybe you're not too familiar with Linux, I'll be covering that more in depth in uh, future videos. So Linux, you know, they have their own commands that are that are going to be different than the Windows commands you might be familiar with. Uh, also, they have a different file manager. Uh, you might be used to the Windows Process Explorer or File Explorer, rather. Uh, but like I said, it comes pre-packaged with a lot of different tools. So you, basically, if you come up here, you click on the little dragon icon up here. That's how you can see at a glance what some tools are. A lot of the tools you can also launch them through the through the command line. So for example, like you know, Metasploit framework, I can do NSF console to launch that. Where is Burp? Uh, if I can find where the binary is located, I could I could do something like that to run Burp. User bin Burp suite. Okay. So if I like I should be able to go to user bin and do a dot slash on burp suite to execute it. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, th th I just want to show you that uh, these these tools you can run them from the command line as well as uh, launching them from up here. So just showing you guys different ways to to do the same thing here, because maybe some of you guys might be pretty new to this stuff, right? Another way I could do that is I could come up here, I could search it, burp suite, and click on it, run it that way. Generally for the like GUI applications like this, the graphical interface applications, I'll launch it like I did there, because it's easy. But obviously if it's like a command line utility, you need to run it from the command line obviously, right? So like MSF console, I would run that from here. I would just do MSF console. Now particularly with Metasploit, I started up with msfdb run. That way it starts the Postgres database first so that your searches will complete a lot more quickly. But yeah, just giving you a basic overview of what this has, and I'm going to be completely honest with you, a lot of these things you won't even need to use uh, for OSCP or for your daily hacking endeavors. The terminal, for sure, something you're going to need a lot. I like the. I think it's by default pinned out here, but if it's not pinned, then you can mark it as a favorite. So you have favorites here. You can add it to favorites, and then you can access it pretty quickly. But obviously, the terminal is something you're going to use a lot. File manager. This is basically the Windows equivalent to File Explorer. So pretty straightforward. You can click around here. If you click File System, okay, right, right now, right? I'm in my home directory. These are all the subdirectories in my home directory. Now, if I want to go to the root directory, I would hit file system. See, now I'm in the root directory. Or alternatively, I could type uh, different directories in here, and then that's a quick way to get to where I want to go. I mean, same thing with Windows, right? Nothing too crazy there. Uh, next up, text editor is a text editor. This is useful, definitely, sometimes. Web browser. This is uh, defaults to Firefox. That's what Kali Linux defaults to. So typically I just roll with that um, because I think it usually, I don't know if it still does, but it used to do Firefox ESR, which is like the 
long release one that's a little bit more compatible with a lot of the legacy tools that you might want to use. And then you can, this is a shortcut to get through their website. Uh, let's see, some documentation. Okay, I didn't know about this. Let me pull this up. I'm kind of curious. It's, okay. So it's uh, do the documentation from like the internet. This is cool. Maybe maybe some of this would be useful to you guys. Yeah, definitely check this out. I actually have never looked at this to be completely honest with you, but um, even covers Windows subsystem for Linux. That's pretty neat. But yep, keep on going. We're in favorites right now. Um, exploit database. This is where we can use Searchsploit and look up the known vulnerabilities for stuff, and we'll have the exploits right there at our fingertips. VulnHub is basically a place where you can get virtual machines. I never use this through Kali, per se. All right, let's take a look at like everything here. I'm only going to highlight the stuff that I use because there is a ton of stuff here. And not only the stuff I use, I'm only going to highlight the stuff that you would actually use on the OSCP because I want to save you guys time. I don't want you guys to get lost in the rabbit hole that is just all the you know, shiny bells and whistles here. I want to keep it straight and to the point. So we will definitely be using burp suite this is what we're going to be using when we do uh web application pen testing because it allows us to really it's a swiss army knife of uh pen testing web apps you can basically do everything you know see the request responses repeat the request change different parameters uh fuzz parameters looking for things that aren't properly validated all that stuff and more really and not even just for HTTP. We can do it on any protocol, by the way. So super useful tool there. This is one that I did use on OSCP. I think it's for like uh, something with passwords. Like, uh, is it the one that there's one tool that scrapes websites and takes like stuff from their HTML and tries to use that to create custom word lists? I think that might be. I'm pretty sure that's what this tool is. Cherry Tree is a note one, uh, a note taking app. You can choose to use it if you do, if you want to. Personally, I don't, but if I was starting today and I didn't have all my notes on OneNote, I would probably use Cherry Tree to be honest with you. All right. Um, these tools are pretty useful for uh, either one, basically, for subdirectory brute forcing. So on websites, ways to find subdirectories. It's pretty useful for that. DNS Recon is, or DNS and Noom are pretty good for, you know, if you run into DNS, those are tools you can use. Won't really cover EdderCat because that's more of a man in the middle thing. You won't need it for OSCP. Okay, yeah, it does have Firefox ESR. That confirms that. FPIN can be pretty useful um, sometimes. I don't really use it too much, but you can custom craft your uh, commands there to test stuff. Hashcat is pretty good for cracking hashes, as well as John the Ripper, which we'll get to later. Hydra, a really useful one for brute forcing, mainly like web forms and stuff like that. John the Ripper for uh, cracking pass uh, passwords offline. And Legion can be pretty useful because what you can do with Legion is you can import the XML nmap file so that's why we do the dash o flag for output all formats we can feed in an xml file it's really good for things like oscp where you have tons of different servers you want to keep things nice and organized actually when i go back for oscp i'm going to use legion a lot more because you can really stay organized it's a nice gooey interface i'm going to start using this one more for sure maybe even in some of my uh ctf endeavors just to get used to using it it's super useful Uh, Medusa, I think that's another like brute force tool, like cracking tool. Haven't used it too much, but it, it can, you can definitely use this on OSCP, I will say. Metasploit, of course, everyone knows about Metasploit. Can use that. Uh, Mimi Cats is more of a post exploitation thing, so you might be able to use it on the labs, but you won't need it for the actual exam. I'll say that. MBT scan can be good, I believe, for like NetBIOS stuff. NCrack, I think, is like a password cracker. Don't use it too much, but you could probably use it. 
Nikto is like a, a nice lightweight command line vulnerability scanner. So this is definitely one I use on OSCP. Nmap, everyone knows Nmap, super useful. 161 is really good for uh, you know port 161, which is SNMP. So you see SNMP, uh, it's a pretty good one to use to enumerate that. Oh crack, I think this is like, uh, we can use rainbow tables and stuff to crack passwords. You probably won't end up using it too much on OSCP, but there might be some use cases. Yeah, okay, PowerSploit. I didn't know it came bundled with it now. That's nice. PowerSploit's good for exploiting Windows machines through uh, PowerShell. It's more of a, once you get your initial foothold and you're looking for the privilege escalation, that's where you would use PowerSploit potentially. Not sure what these PTH things are here, to be completely honest with you. Recon NG. I don't use it too often, but it can be useful for recon. It's basically like Metasploit, except it's all recon. It's like an entire framework, but it's basically all recon. Let's see. What else? Search exploit. You can search exploit DB, pull down exploits, <clears throat> adjust them as you need to, and run them. Super useful, especially in OSCP. <clears throat> Let's see. SQL map, another very useful, <clears throat> very traditional, tried and true tool for trying to find SQL map in, or SQL injections. And it's actually pretty much like the best tool uh, for finding SQL injections, like the most consistent, pretty thorough tool. You can even have it spawn a shell for you after you find it and everything. There's a lot of things you can do with that one. Oh, it does come with a Unix privest check. Okay, cool. You can use that in post exploitation for Windows. And this video is getting kind of long, so I'm going to try to wrap this up soon. We're almost done here, but Vim is a really good command line text editor. In fact, this is my preferred uh, way of editing exploits and stuff. I just go into Vim. Uh, I'm a Vim. I'm more of a Vim guy, but you can use Nano if you'd like, or the, in some cases, the GUI text editor. Wfuzz, really good for fuzzing parameters, but a lot of times I just end up doing it on Burp at work because I have a Burp Pro license, but for... For uh, this box where I don't have that, I'll probably be making use of WFuzz to fuzz for different parameters and whatnot. And Wireshark can potentially be useful. OSCP, not really so much, but yeah, Wireshark, this is a tool that you can use for uh, sniffing the network, looking at uh, what's going on over the wire. And WP Scan, this is a good one actually. You can scan for WordPress stuff, look for WordPress vulnerabilities. And then Zap is basically a Wasp version of Burp Suite. Don't really use it too much because Burp's pretty good. But actually, now that I only, I'm limited to the Burp Suite Community Edition, which has a lot of limitations, including when you try to fuzz stuff, it goes slow. I might use Zap a little bit because it doesn't have any limitations. It's completely open source and free. And so you can do pretty much most of the things that Burp can do, you can do in Zap or pretty much everything, some people say. I haven't really used it too much. I've used it a little bit and... You can definitely use the intruder functionality for fuzzing stuff on Zap. So maybe WFuzz, maybe Zap. I might use each one, either one or maybe a mix of both to fuzz stuff in the future on these videos. But yeah, that's pretty much all the applications that come prepackaged. Now, of course, there's applications that I grab from the internet, from GitHub and stuff like that and set up. Yeah, I hope you found this video of value. Let me know if there's any questions or comments down in the section below. And I will see you guys in the next video.